Hey guys, this is Down Phoenix, and welcome back to another episode of What I'm Playing. As you see here, we are playing the phenomenal, the seminal, the legendary game itself, Resident Evil 4. Arguably the best Resident Evil game in the franchise. And, of course, everybody's got to have their favorites, right? But Resident Evil 4 is one that is a time-honored classic in the series. This is one that people will finally remember for years to come. This game had changed the shape of what would become of the Resident Evil series in a big way because prior to this game, we had the games, of course, that all had the classic fixed camera perspectives and you had a lot of limitations over the gameplay itself. Resident Evil 4 really opened things up because it gave us huge open environments that we can explore in. And we get a lot more freedom of movement. There's just a lot more going on here than there was in the previous games. So that is one reason, naturally. That this game was such a big success. I guess I already killed the enemies off in this area. I, I don't know why, I, but I suppose I saved right before? I don't know. I had a whole bunch of saves, as you can see. I beat this game. I decided to beat it offline and just have a go at it, you know, and uh, just get through it so that I can play this episode. Let's go ahead and insert our lock thing of course that's really weird that I would have saved right beforehand but I guess I kind of freaked out and thought maybe I won't get a chance to save or something like that so yeah of course like I said we got the big open environments which we did not have in the previous games not to mention the openness of the controls the fluidness of everything I mean, you still have a little bit of stiffness. I think that's just to kind of intentionally add a little bit of that element of tank controls, but it plays a lot smoother than the past games. And so it's really not hard to see why this game has aged so well, even though it may not be the best playing RE game by today's standards, you know, it still plays really nice. And I just can't really recommend it enough. I really can't, people. This is a good one. This is a very good read. We want to see if we can get that little mask there. This we're going to have some enemies coming up that we're going to have to deal with, of course. So, go ahead and shoot them up. And then, of course, we can do that little kick maneuver to stun them and do some extra damage as well. Really great. Yep, stop that insulation. We are playing some Resident Evil 4. We don't need to play other games. <laughs> Xbox. This is on Game Pass, of course, by the way. This just came out on Game Pass recently. So, obviously, I'm going to play it because I'm a Game Pass whore. I love me some Game Pass. But anyways, I was really wanting to play this game again. Anyways, it's been a while. It's been, I think, 2011, I believe it was, when I last played it on the PlayStation 3. And before that, of course, I played through it on Nintendo Wii, PS2, and GameCube. So I've played a lot of Resident Evil 4 in my times, and I've enjoyed it every little bit since. This is the longest, of course, that it's been since I've played the game, but, you know, I just always have to revisit this game. There's just so much going on here in a really good way. So we got this nice little dynamic maneuver, or can't, yeah, because I accidentally got up at the last second. Let's go ahead and combine these, because I've got a yellow herb as it is anyways, and expand our health. So let's go ahead and get those uh, guys again. There we go. That's what I wanted to do, is blow those guys into smithereens. But you gotta watch out for the bear traps, of course. The deadly bear traps that just happen to be everywhere. You can, of course, shoot them or you can use your knife, which is what I like to do so I can conserve my ammunition because it's kind of a waste to use my ammunition for something so basic and bare bones. But I digress. 
We just got this one last guy to deal with here. And we just gotta blow his head off and I'll do the trick. But apparently there's other guys, so I'll have to figure out what's up with that, of course. So, Resident Evil 4 does a lot of things other than the things I mentioned to bring new stuff to the table, of course. You see that I grabbed some money, for example. You can actually use a shop in this particular game, which is really neat. You know, really cool. You get to use this shop, of course, to buy new weapons, buy upgrades. Unfortunately, you can't buy ammunition, although you can indirectly get ammunition with one of the upgrade systems. And now we can hop in here and grab us our mask. Elegant mask, which we can put some gems into, I believe. Uh, let's check that out real quick here. So. Alright, examine it. Three divots, something might fit inside. Yeah, let's go ahead and combine it. Nope, okay. Well, we'll fit something in there eventually. But, uh, anyways, you have the merchant, of course. The lovely merchant. Everybody loves this character. I mean, the merchant is probably one of my favorite NPCs of a video game ever. And it's really weird because you don't really get any storyline from the merchant or anything like that. It's just a real basic, what are you buying? What are you selling? You know, that kind of stuff. And he's just this mysterious dude that's out here in the middle of nowhere while you're dealing with a bunch of bloodthirsty parasite driven people they're out to kill you and you know deal with the president's daughter which of course is what you're trying to do as leon here you're trying to save the president's daughter and he's just there out there trying to make his money you know and just mind his own business and it's 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 so fantastic it's so ridiculous that i can't help but love it you know and of course you can come in here in this water and kill all these fish which the fish, of course, can heal you, but you can also sell them to the merchant for money because, you know, the merchant, for some reason, wants to buy your dead fish. It's just crazy. It really is ridiculous, but, you know, it's it's just neat, you know. It's a really cool way, of course, to give a lot of depth to the game, but at the same time, give it some ridiculousness, which is what we love Japanese games for, you know. They really add a lot of goofy elements like this that we don't really see in American games quite as often. So, yeah, the merchant kicks ass. What, what else can I say about that? Um, other than the fact that I'd like to knife fish. Knifing the fish makes sense because, for some reason, your bullets don't like to go through the water, so... We're just gonna keep on fishing as Leon Kennedy. Unfortunately, no achievements to be unlocked here by doing this. Would have been a really good opportunity to throw in some achievements. You know, I don't even have enough room for this particular bass. <laughs> We're gonna have to figure out a spot we can put it. So hold on a second. Oh, I can make room. It's just I'm gonna have to move some stuff around here, obviously. I don't even want to do that. What what's going on there? Alright, I think maybe we can get the fish in there now. I'm pretty sure. Let's try it. That's a big ass bass. <laughs> but yeah, just ridiculous. Just ridiculous. And fun, of course. I don't even have room for you, fishy. So you get to stay. Or I guess I can reload my gun. And I guess you get to still stay. <laughs> but one of the things that's really great about this game, of course, is the variety of environments. This game has a ton of environments that really, really make this an epic adventure. Because, I mean, obviously with other Resident Evil games, you do go through a very various amounts of environments and of course Resident Evil 5 goes through the same basic formula. I love Resident Evil 5 too, don't get me wrong, that's an excellent game as well, but it doesn't have the same magic as this if just for the mere fact that, well, we've already had the game, you know? <laughs> we've already had a game that did this, it's called Resident Evil 4, you know? So nice try Resident Evil 5, but you're not doing anything new, you're doing the same thing just in a different area with different characters. Uh, but I digress. 
we're gonna go ahead and cut off this save here because I'm just kind of showing off some gameplay just showing some different segments of the game so you guys can kind of get a nice little vibe for what we're doing here of course uh, here we are gonna skip much further into the game this is chapter 4-1 uh, I have plenty of inventory room here Look how much more inventory space it is here here is a lovely merchant just like I was telling you guys about where you can buy your uh, weapon upgrades and everything like that. I guess I must have already done that because I have no money. Uh, but let's go ahead and move on to another area. Apparently, got some weapon ammunition. Uh, so at this end of the segment, I just dealt with this really crazy little boss enemy that you have to deal damage to by using liquid nitrogen tanks. But, you know, I have a good variety of weapons here. I've got a revolver, rifle, shotgun. Got a machine gun, of course, which the machine gun I was never originally a, much of a fan of because of the fact that it doesn't do a lot of damage. But the machine gun is actually highly useful, as I realized with this particular playthrough. And it's actually became one of my favorite guns just because of the utility purpose of the weapon, of course, especially if you like to go in and do the melee attacks like that. Very handy. And, you know, at least for the lower level enemies, it does more than enough to stun them. So if you need to do the melee attacks or if you need to get away or something like that, it's a great way to deal with those types of enemies. So we're going to go ahead and run down through this mine here. We've got these enemies that are acting like they're going to come and attack us, but we're not going to really let them too much. I mean, we'll let them as much as we have to, obviously. There we go. Move on here. Yeah, this is a great way to play the game. It really is. And, of course, you can really conserve your ammunition. But when you get situations like this guy carrying dynamite, sometimes you just want to do something like that instead. <laughs> so that way you don't have to deal with them blowing you up with sticks of dynamite. Instead, you just have to deal with them throwing axes into your back. Which I guess is also pretty painful. There we go. I might as well use an herb since I'm getting myself killed anyways, or we could use a first aid spray, that's even better. So whenever you get the enemies exposed down, you can of course knife them. Again, great way to conserve ammunition. Probably not the best thing to do when you get enemies directly pursuing you like they were just for me just now. Another great thing about the SMG, obviously, is the fact that since it fires really good, I can go ahead and do this. And, you know, I have plenty of ammunition, so it's not like I have to worry too much about any problems there. I think I knocked that guy off. Yeah, I did. Okay. Let's go ahead and trigger this switch here, which is going to um, bring up a very cool little encounter that we're going to have here. Here in just a moment. Look at that, Leon is so skilled, he just literally shot an axe in midair. I mean, how badass is that? Chuck Norris, eat your heart out. Because Leon Kennedy's got something to say. There we go. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and give this guy a nice little headshot. Yeah, he appreciated that, I'm sure. <laughs> But anyways, I said there was going to be a fun encounter, and that's what I mean by that. We have the Chainsaw character, of course. The uh, Leatherface ripoff, which is a seminal villain that debuted in this game. This is a very popular villain for a very good reason. Because it's just so creepy and so classic, and of course it's a uh, great nod to classic horror movies. And he also doesn't withstand a rifle shot very well so not too menacing whenever you could just do this 
Yeah. Not this time, Leatherface. Not this time. Okay. Deal with these guys again. Take them down the stairwell, of course. Now if I can hit him, maybe, maybe we can do that. <laughs> yeah, it gets pretty intense, it really does. Trying to manage things here. Let's go ahead and bust out the Magnum. Powerful enough to shoot through enemies. And obviously does plenty of damage as well. Not to mention Leon just looks fashionable this gun here. I can't unfortunately get a front shot of him. I would love to, but just trust me on it. He looks good with this huge ass magnum. <laughs> I think you guys take my word on that though. So let's go ahead and pop over to some more action in Resident Evil 4. Actually this time we're going to go ahead and go to the main menu and I'm going to show you some of the different modes that you can have in this because when you beat this game, you get all kinds of extras. You can replay the game through. In New Game Plus, you have all kinds of extra optional campaigns, two to be exact, as well as the Mercenaries mode, which is really fun. The Mercenaries mode allows you to rack up high scores. Basically, you try to get as many kills as you can in an allotted time, and you kick as much ass as you can, and you just have a good time. That's all there is to this mode. And we are going to be having plenty of good times here. As soon as I get this crazy winch off of me here. Go ahead and grab this time upgrade. That'll start us off nicely here. And come on in, people. We've got a nice surprise in here waiting for you. There we go, I told you. I told you it was a nice surprise. Oh, I did not see her hitting me there. I figured I would have made it. Kept the combo alive, of course. You definitely want to get the combos alive in order to rack up the points, because obviously racking up the points is very nice. Alright, let's go ahead and bust out the shoddy. Too hotty. Got the chainsaw character, of course, coming after us. Jump over, yes, so we don't accidentally get ourselves killed. Oh, shit, the chainsaw lady's after us. Don't want her to deal with us. So, yeah, just a lot of good variety to really irk out this game as much as possible, you know. Resident Evil 4 is a game that keeps on giving for a long time. And of course I got myself killed because I really wasn't paying attention to my health, unfortunately. But, that being said, it's a fantastic game. Now I do have a few flaws that I want to point out with this game, of course. Uh, for example, this newer version, this updated version of the game, is still based on the same assets that the original GameCube one was on. So we don't really get any bump up in textures or anything like that, which is kind of a shame. It does look better, of course, but it's not a huge difference. I mean, if you're stuck with the GameCube version, just probably stick with that, honestly, unless you want the additional content, because some of the additional content that they have was not available on the GameCube version. It was available on the PS2 and later versions instead. Now, the Wii version is a really great way to play because it has excellent motion controls. Uh, definitely one of the best uses of the Wii remote and nunchuck that I've seen uh, from a third party. And that's kind of sad considering it was one of the early Wii games. <laughs> I think it was like 2007 or something like that. And it's a shame that we never had another version that used motion controls like that. It would have been great to see that on the PlayStation Move or, um, you know, something like that. You know, we've got the PSVR. Let's get a VR version of Resident Evil 4. What are you thinking, Capcom? You guys already did it for 7, right? Um, but I digress, you know. Other than that, and then of course the movement being a little stiff by today's standards, you know, the movement's definitely a lot smoother 
in titles like Resident Evil 2, uh, Resident Evil 2 remake, that is, of course. And, uh, you know, it would be nice to see them to make some modern improvements and updates to this game. You know, a proper Resident Evil 4 remake. Now, I'd say it should wait until a Resident Evil 3 remake, of course, because I know the fans of that series are definitely long overdue for some love with their game. But Resident Evil 4 is not only my favorite Resident Evil game, but it's one of my favorite games, period. Uh, there's just a lot to love here. And it's a game that I keep coming back to, even though it's been a few years. It's been a few years since I played it, but this is probably not the last time I'm going to play it, even though I'm playing it here on the Xbox One. You know, I will be a sucker, and if they come out with the next generation, I'll get it again, even if they don't make any of the improvements that I mentioned there, you know, because it's just a fantastic game. Now, that being said, I do have standards, and I'm not going to pay $30 for the version on the Switch when it's $20 or less everywhere else. You know, I'm not going to pay more just because it's a handheld version. But if Capcom fairly prices it, maybe I'll pick it up on the Switch, hint, hint. Uh, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of what I'm playing. Don't forget to let me know what you thought uh, in the comments below. But till then, down Phoenix out.